just while the weather's not all that great, I'm just going to finish off a couple of little jobs. So I'm going to exchange this twist little clip thing. I'm not quite sure what it's called. Um, but um, that was commented on one of the videos. I agree, it's not a very good type of connector. So I'm going to um, I'm going to change that while we're here. Um, but I'm also just going to finish fixing the bilge monitor in place. So I've uh, extended the wires with some tin wire. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a bit of protective sleeve on it, uh, which is just here, the same sort of braid type idea that I've done with all the other wires. I'm just going to put that on and then I'm just going to temporarily stick it down at the front here where I want it. And then if it all works, I'll, I'll put a, a little stainless steel screw into this and then fix it in properly. But for now, I'm just, I've just got some double-sided um, sticky pads that'll just hold it in place just to make sure everything works. Um, and then I'll just show you a couple of changes that have happened to the code. So one of the subscribers um, showed a way of how we could make the code actually say uh, water or or whatever you want really, two different states. Um, and I'll show you that in the code. I'm actually sending the data across to it twice because it's easier to make a notification with a zero or a one um, than it is with a, a word. You can't use a word to actually do that. So I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But basically I'm sending two, I'm sending zero and one. Um, and I'm also sending something like um, bilge clear and water present um, because that's just a nice visual thing for somebody to be able to see. So I'll show you how that works in a minute and that's um, thanks to one of the subscribers that um, sort of uh, messaged on the last video and said this is what you need to do to change the code. Hopefully you can see the sensor's just stuck on the front there. So that can just be moved um, and that'll detect obviously any water that ends up in that tray and that's the lowest point so any water that happens sort of or any water that does get in at the side would also run down and into this part of the tray so it's probably the best place actually for it to go i'm only just stuck it on with a double-sided sticky pad but it'll do for now and then i'm just going to thread this cable up um, and connect it up to the box which is just there can see the difference. So previously we had an int to bool function here which was essentially returning back true or false. Now we've changed that to an int to string based on that recommendation and you can put a value in here of, of essentially what you want it to see. So if the sensor returns back a 1, i.e. there is water there, it returns water present. Um, else it'll return back bilge clear. Um, and you can change this text to whatever you see fit. Obviously all this code is available via GitHub, so you can just download it and you can just amend that to, to whatever you want to see. So what happens then is um, you change the value down here. I think again this was uh, output bool, so now it's um, bilge connect to connect to this. Um, that will then convert it from uh, a value to the text that you can see here and then we output that to propulsion engine bilge. What we do then again is we connect to the sensor again, this time um, without any transformation so it will actually send out its 1 and its 0 and I've just called that dot raw. So if you were to monitor the console down here you would actually see it send out two values, one the text that's here and one zero or one and as I say that's really handy for creating like notifications and things um, uh, but if you don't want this and you, you just want to see the value you can just simply comment that line out but it's just a way to connect to the sensor again and send another value without going through this transformation that's happening here. Just want to point out one other thing, um, another comment was made around internal resistors. Now the ESP32 does have um, internal resistors, not all of them, so do check on the one that you've got. And I've actually called that, I've actually called that in the expression here, so it is using um, an, its internal resistor as well, so I actually didn't need um, an external resistor on the board, which was a, another thing that would, was flagged up. So again, you can um, set that up how you want and just ensure that your ESP actually has does include the internal resistor and if it does you can put in this command here internal pull up and it will use the resistor that's on the board instead of you having to put um, an external one on anything that you've created. So that's the code as I say um, all available on GitHub um, just download that and, and amend as you see fit. 
So now that all the code is finished, let's head over to Signal K and see how we can use that information to trigger events or notifications. So here you can see we just load the no notification tab up. Um, and first of all, you've got to do an approval. So you've got to make sure that the notifications app can actually talk to Signal K. So go through the approval process. Make sure you're logged into the server so that you can approve that token. Approve it with a timeout period of never and you need to give it read, write, access as it says at the bottom of the application there. Okay, now that that's done, you can go back across to the application and you can trigger an event based on a notification. This can be used for any anything. It doesn't have to necessarily be used for, for bilge monitoring. Um, you can trigger events or zones um, or actions based on whatever you want, whatever the path is. The Zones app actually needs a plugin to be enabled before that will work, and we'll show that in just a second. So here we go in and we're going to pick a key, um, so something that we want to trigger an event, and this is best really for things like man overboard or things that would trigger you know, a one-off event rather than a, a value changing. So here, when we see a notification on that particular string, we're just going to trigger the uh, alert level, the visual and a sound, and the message one. So these buttons on the side here allow you to test that. So if we press the button, I'll have to just bear with this because it is a Raspberry Pi 3 and it's running a little bit slowly. So if we press the top button here, there we go, there's the triggered event and there's the message that appears. That message text can be whatever you put in the message box. Here are all the sounds. So here are the different sound events that will get triggered um, for the different alert levels. And again, you can change those um, and select your own sounds as you see fit. Here are some actions. So again, if you want to trigger um, an action based on something that you see, you can also do that. So you could actually get the device to shut down. You could set a key. You could make it wait and check again. So things like anchor alarms and things like that, it's, it's really useful uh, for things where it needs to check maybe multiple times before an event has actually happened, before it, it triggers something. I've not done a lot with this, but uh, I know it's quite powerful. So again, here now, if we just trigger that event, you'll see what happens in KIP. So not only has it been triggered in Signal K, but it's also been triggered in KIP and it, that works out of the box. So there's nothing else that you need to do to, to, to make that actually happen and appear in the bottom left hand side. And there's the alert pop up box again. Um, you can snooze that by just clicking on the bottom there and acknowledging it either for a period of time or acknowledging it until it gets triggered again. There are your two options. And now we'll look at configuring the zone. So into the plugins and into edit zones. And here in this box, you're going to need to add the key that it's going to monitor in order to trigger something. So click add, put your signal K path in the box. Here, I'm just going to copy the one from before because I haven't actually got any live data in this. So I'm just going to take this path and just paste it in and show you what the other options are once it's actually done. So we'll paste that in and then we click add. And this is where we ha we can add a range of uh, a lower and upper limit, for example, and then what the alarm state is going to be. So let's say we put zero and, and one in there, for example, um, and that state would be either normal or it would be um, an alert state um, and then Next, you can see what's going to happen when that happens, when that state is triggered. And we can also trigger a message at the same time. So for the bilge monitor, really, the, the lower limit and the upper limit are both zero. So we would put zero in each. And only when we see a one, we consider that outside of that zone. Or we do it the other way around. We put the, the lower and the upper limit at one and allow that to trigger something. Um, so you've got a couple of options there on how you want to do it. So now that that's set up, you can see that it, it pops up in the actual application. Again, this is system level wide. So any apps that can read notifications will get triggered on this, not just um, if you were to set it up in an app. And I'll show you how to set that up just in Kip, for example. So I've just got a little bit of a security thing that I've got to approve here, but the Pi's gone a little bit slow. So we just go back in and, and approve that. 
So you can see now that it's been approved that the uh, value in the zones is also updated as to how I configured it. So the next step here is that we'll show you just how to configure it in KIP. So just an application level by itself. So if you fire up KIP and you go to settings, And this also has a zone. So I've used zones on gauges before, but obviously you can also trigger um, notifications based on um, just a value. So again, as we've done with the bilge monitor, zero or one or zero and zero or any value of your choice. And again, you can set a state. The difference being here that this will only trigger in KIP. So that these values are not used anywhere else. It doesn't go the other way. Um, it's purely what the data that, that's been run in KIP for this. So again, we'll paste that path in. You'd select your default source and your value. You put your lower and your upper limit um, and what you want to do when you see something that's either outside of that or when that value changes and click apply. And there we go, there's the alarm. So again, that will just trigger that notification in the corner. You won't get the pop-up um, and the alert level like you do on this one. That doesn't work the same, but that will still trigger things in KIP. I hope that's been useful. I'm using that to, to uh, trigger alerts and things now on the bilge monitor. So if we do see water in the bilge, it will start to notify us. If there's any questions, again, please let us know. Um, always great to read comments and feedback. Um, and we'll see you on the next one.